to truly pray, we must set aside all fantasies that we have about God. Set aside everything that our imagination has conjured up about God and who God is. Because these things stand between us and truly knowing God. These things we create in our imagination are a barrier between human beings and the reality of God's presence. A long marriage will only thrive if the man and the woman are willing to truly recognize and love the truth of the other person. If one of the spouses tries to cling to some kind of romantic fiction about the other person, then there will be no true union and the marriage will, will fail. And so it is with God. We must be willing to encounter the living God as he is, not as we imagine and not even as we want him to be. But drawing closer to God makes us face up to not only the, the beauty and the glory of God, the love he has for us, but also makes us face up to the, to the reality of how far we truly are from him. It is a painful reality that we must face in prayer. How far we have removed ourselves from God's presence. This distance we place between ourselves and God isn't just the result of our sinfulness. Our sinfulness and God's holiness. Because God assures us that he is willing and able to overcome our sinfulness. He continually offers himself to us. He continually offers an intimacy that can reach the very depths of who we are, beyond our sinfulness. God continuously calls us to enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ. But our separation from God results from the condition of our heart. Whatever sins, terrible sins we've committed in our lives, whatever terrible lives we may have lived, it is the condition of our heart when we come to God in prayer that determines whether we will truly know God. And if we stand before God in humility, he will receive us. But if our hearts are tainted with pride, we cannot know God. Pride will prevent us from truly entering the presence of God. In the lives of the saints, we see an intimacy in prayer. When we read the words of the prayers of the saints, they should encourage us to seek more of God. Because in their words of prayer, we, we immediately recognize the great humility they have before God. The saints understand their sinfulness, not because they, they wallow in guilt, but because they, they truly see and understand how different they are to the holiness of God. They, they recognize his perfect goodness, his love, and how unlike they are to all of this. And in recognizing this, their humility grows and in this condition, God draws them closer to himself because in humility they are able to receive him, receive his grace, receive his presence. Prayer is such a, an important and serious matter because every time we turn to God in prayer, we're confronted with life and death. Every time we pray, we are confronted with life and death. The humble heart in prayer is renewed. It finds life, eternal life. While of course the proud heart only falls deeper into darkness. Because the, the proud heart is truly refusing to see the truth of God. 
pride fills us with lies. Pride deceives us. Pride blinds us to God and God's holiness. And so pride builds walls of falsehood between us and God. Walls that truly shut out the vision of God's perfection. And there is another death that we must face when we come to prayer. And if we truly want to encounter the living God, the old man who once ruled over us must die. He must be put to death. This is why prayer is often so painful, brings pain of heart. Because the old man clings to us and we cling to him. The pleasures, the sensations, the feelings that the old man has brought to us can be a great comfort, a reassurance. And it leaves us vulnerable to put the old man to death. But we have to be willing to be vulnerable to the change God brings if we are to enter deeply into the presence of God in prayer. When Christ asks us, do you want to be changed? Like the man at the pool, do you want to be changed? Our answer mustn't be just words. It mustn't give excuses or even just simply plead in words. If we want wholeness, if we want healing, if we want eternal life, when Christ says, do you want to be healed? We must show our answer in more than words. We must, we must demonstrate our answer in the way we strive to be obedient to Christ's commands. In our struggle to love and forgive each other. Uh, our struggle, our determination to resist temptation. This is our answer when Christ says, do you want to be healed? Then show me, let me see this, he says to us. And only when we come to God in prayer, with lives that are, are offered to him beyond words, can we ever hope to see beyond the fantasies and the confusion that our imagination creates. And it is truly a barrier between us and the truth of God.